This is Deanna Latanzio from the Sag Harbor Historical Society. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Sag Harbor Farm, the Silly Farm, the Cove Side Dairy that, that was established by my grandparents almost 100 years ago in 1922. My grandparents came from Italy. They came to America. They bought this piece of property for $400. Their dream was to establish a dairy farm. Now a dairy farm is a farm that has cows and the sole purpose is to produce milk. And they would bottle the milk and deliver the milk. It was a true family farm. The farm was started with just 12 cows and eventually they had up to 65 cows. If you were to purchase the milk, it would be in a bottle. They had small bottles and big bottles, but the, bo the bottles at Cove Side Dairy, Vitali Silly, Sag Harbor, New York. I'd like to show you the buildings on the farm that is no longer a farm, but has been purchased by someone who has left many of the buildings intact. The first building that you'll see here is the house. Now, my mother grew up in this house with four brothers and two sisters. There were nine people in this house. And you might say, Wow, that's not a very big house. Well, the house was even smaller when my mother and her family lived there. Very close quarters. The next building is called the Milk House, which I'll explain a little bit about in a bit. And then in the back is the original barn, where the cows were milked and where they, where they slept. I'd like to tell you now about the life in the day of a farmer. Now, living on a farm, growing up on a farm, was not an easy life because you never had a day off. The cows never said, okay, you don't have to milk me today. They had to be milked twice a day, once at 5 a.m. and once at, p at 5 p.m. And they would, after they were milked, the milk was put into um, buckets at first. And then in later years, they were put in heavy metal milk, milk cans that were Brought by, brought by truck to the milk house. The milk house is that second house there. That house, that milk house was where they prepared the milk for people to drink. They pasteurized it. It's a process where they make sure the milk is safe for people to consume. Also in the milk house is where the milk was poured into bottles. It was like on a little con uh, conveyor and then the caps were snapped on. Once the milk was put into the bottles, it was then ready to be brought to the public. There was a giant milk, there was a giant refrigerator in the milk house where it would be kept cold until they were ready to transport it. Now, in the beginning, my grandfather delivered milk with a horse and buggy, but as years passed, he had trucks and as his family grew, he had four sons to help him with the delivery of the milk. Now, the Sometimes the weather didn't cooperate. One time in 1947, there was a very bad snowstorm and the milk had to be delivered by a farm tractor. And then in the 50s, we had several hurricanes. And when we had those hurricanes, the water would flood from the cove and the entire street of Glover Street would be flooded. In fact, the house was flooded sometimes three feet or more of water was in the house. To avoid the flooding of the house, the house was raised in later years. But to get the milk to the customers, they would put the milk in rowboats and they would row the milk to, to trucks that were on higher ground. This is a sign in memory of my grandfather, the Tally Silly Avenue. It's this little street that goes behind the pasture where the farm, where the cows once grazed. What you're looking at was once one of the pastures where the cows would graze. Grazing means they would all day lay in the fields and eat grass. And by doing that, their body was able to produce milk. After the farm was sold, this property was empty for a while and there was a beautiful piece of my grandfather's farm equipment there in memory of him. Now, as you can see, it has been developed by all these houses. Twice a day, the traffic on Glover Street would be stopped so the cows could be escorted across the street to the pasture, and then at the end of the day, escorted across the street back into the barn so they could be milked. This pasture was also used 
for a circus. Once a year, my grandfather would rent this piece of property for the circus to come to town. They only stayed for one night and it was such a wonderful time for my mother's family because they got to get free tickets and go to the circus. This is the site of the other pasture where the cows would graze. It's alongside of the farm and it goes all the way around to Long Island Avenue. It, fortunately, this land, this nine acres has been preserved. This is the other end of the pasture that ran alongside the farm and it curled around and it ended up on Long Island Avenue. And every now and then the cows would decide to take a stroll. They would come over the fence and they would take a stroll. They would cross Long Island Avenue and shoot up to Bayview Avenue. You see that little hill at the top of Bayview Avenue? Well, that's where my mother lived. And she would very often get a phone call telling her that the cows were loose and she'd have to call the farm and tell her brothers to please come and corral the cows and bring them back into the pasture. Now, as you know, cows are very large animals and they need a lot of food in order to produce milk. Well, in the winter, when the snow is on the ground and they can't graze, they would eat food that the farmer had stored for them. Now, my grandfather bought property in Sag Harbor in several different places, and he grew corn and he grew hay. And they harvested the corn, and they would put it, the corn with the corn stalk and all through a chopper, chop it all up, and then they would shoot it up the silo. The silo is the building where they store the food for the cows for the winter. Now, I talked to my Aunt Angie, who is the surviving member of the Silly family, and she told me that one of the jobs that the kids had to do was once the, the silage was shot up the silo, the kids would have to go into the silo and jump up and down to pat it down to make sure that they could fit as much silage into the silo as possible. The silo stood to the right next to the uh, barn. It was a tall, white, brown building. They also needed hay. They, my grandfather would buy hay from different places, and he also grew hay. And the, far, the farm stored the hay in the barn. At the top of the barn, there was a hayloft. And they had pulleys, and they would lower the hay down to the ground and to the truck so they could put it into the barn for the cows because they had to stay in in the bad weather. Silly Farm was part of Sag Harbor's history and it enabled my grandparents to achieve the American dream.